Hello there. I am live apparently. <laughs> so today I've had a little shift around in my schedule you may have noticed because I've been popping into um, Facebook on an evening and I thought I'd have a change of scenery and turn up on lunchtime and see what happens. <laughs> so I might still be talking to myself but who cares? You know I can talk to myself don't you? But if anybody does turn up or if anybody watches this later, that's all the good because today I'm going to talk about overthinking. And I happen to think that it's a, a scourge. <laughs> a scourge in society at the moment is overthinking and people are getting caught up in that. So where does, oh I've got somebody watching, that's good. Where does overthinking come from? How does it, or how does it happen? I think it starts with a basic misunderstanding and it's a misunderstanding that I share all the time in this group and that is the misunderstanding of how we create our experience. That we think or many people think that experience is created from the outside in. So that means that the outside world is causing us to feel a particular way. But in actual fact that's not true. And the basic physiology of the human being says that it's not true, really, because if you have any kind of feeling, your feelings come from your hormones that are racing around in your body. So how can that come from outside of you? So it's really simple, this, but it's not always easy. <laughs> We're like fish swimming around in, uh, like the way swish fish... <laughs> <laughs> the way fish swim around in water, we're swimming around in thought. So overthinking, maybe, you know, if you watch this video at some point, you can tell me what you tend to think about when you're overthinking, but this is how I kind of think it probably works. Well, I kind of know how it used to work for me. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if we think that the world outside us is creating our experience of life. And by experience, I mean what we become consciously aware of, which is generally, I generally talk about our feelings, our emotions, um, that kind of thing. If we think that's coming from outside of us, then it's very easy to get caught up in thinking about how we can change that. How can we change the outside world to make our life better? So that involves trying to control an outside world that I strongly suspect is not yours to control. So whether that is the world outside you, the weather, the people around you, or whatever else it is, that is not yours to control. If you're trying to find ways to control that, you can see how that could really quickly become a place to overthink about things. Even thinking at all about trying to manipulate the outside world for you to be okay isn't particularly helpful. So I think that's the basis of the basis of overthinking is looking for ways to make the world fit how we think it needs to be for us to feel okay. So that can fill our heads with an awful lot of thoughts and then result in an awful lot of feelings which, which of course makes us feel worse in the moment. So what else do we know about overthinking? A lot of thinking we do on a day-to-day -day basis is about ourselves, about how we're feeling, how we're thinking. And I don't mean that in a kind of self-centered way. I mean it often in terms of how we're operating in the world and how we're being around other people. Are we doing it right? And are we doing the right thing for ourselves, our businesses, our families, whatever? Do we feel okay? Do we feel okay enough to do this certain thing or that certain thing? Will we be okay if we do this kind of thing or that kind of thing? Will we cope? Will we be resilient enough? Are we confident enough? 
<laughs> I know you can relate to what I'm saying. It's a continual swirl, isn't it, of questions about ourselves. And I think that really contributes to overthinking. Because if in the moment you are not sure about something and you think that there's something about you that's not okay, then you're going to go again into overdrive trying to fix that thing so that you can feel okay. And it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> because your okayness comes from inside you, not from outside. And not even from that over-analysis of your state of mind. And another place where I think overthinking comes to play, comes into play, or it comes out to play, I don't know which is, <laughs> comes inside our heads to play, is where we have a particular label for ourselves. So I've spoken about this before but and I'm not I am not discounting the the issues that people have with stress and anxiety and how they feel really really uncomfortable and how that feels really really awful. I'm not discounting that. However, back in the day when I was a lass <laughs> uh, in the 70s and 80s there was very little recognition of mental illness and so I think we were just more accepting of feelings but we didn't see them as a sickness so if I had a nervous feeling just prior to a driving test back then I would have absolutely assumed that the driving test was creating that feeling because that's what I understood now I know it wouldn't be my thinking about the driving test but I would expect to feel uncomfortable. I, and I would kind of know, well, you know, either when the driving test starts or when I get past the other side of it, it'll be all right, I'll be fine. I didn't see that there was anything wrong with me because I felt nervous. If, however, you have been told that you have, or you have self-diagnosed as yourself as being anxious, having anxiety, being an anxious person then you may well think of that uncomfortable feeling that butterflies heart pounding whatever else as being something that is not okay about you something that is not right in the world and you may then go into overthinking about that sensation Where's it coming from? Is it because that horrible thing happened to me a few years ago? Is it coming back to haunt me again? What can I do about it? Do I need to get help? Do I need to get out of here? Do I need to do something? It, oh, is there a technique that I've learned somewhere that I could use right now to make this go away? And all that overthinking creates more of the feeling that was uncomfortable in the first place. A lot more of it. And that increase of thinking about that unpleasant feeling increases the adrenaline in your body and the cortisol, causes it to build up and that's when you can feel really stressed, really anxious and even have a panic attack. So what else comes into play with overthinking? I think just the things we think we need to think about. What I am noticing now as I spend time with this understanding and help my clients towards this understanding is that just the fact that you don't have to think about something if you don't want is so empowering. I know there is stuff going on in the world, there always is. But what if you don't actually be, have to be involved in that? What if you don't have to express an opinion on everything? What if you don't have to come down on one side or another? What if there's lots of things that actually 
you don't need to be bothered about. What if that was something else you could take off your mind? What if you notice when you're having a horrible feeling about something on the news, you know that that's coming from your thoughts about the news and the thing on the news, and you chose not to think about it because you don't have to think anything. I've spoken before about the randomness sometimes of the way thoughts can appear you know, appear in our minds. But you don't have to think that. You don't have to carry on with that train of thought. You can just let it pass. You don't have to know the whys and wherefores of anything, everything and anything. Anything and everything. <laughs> Get my teeth in the right order. I, I did a, a video a couple of days ago that was about the things you can take off your mind. And one of those was unanswerable questions. How many unanswerable questions do you ask in a day? Why did he do, why did that driver pull out in front of me at the roundabout this morning? For example. Well, who flipping knows and you will never know. So how would it be if you just let that go? If you just decided that you don't have to know what that man I nearly said in the Cortina then but I realised I'll probably lose half the audience then because <laughs> who knows what Cortina is well probably lots of people know what a Cortina is who are my age but wh why does it matter we ask so many unanswerable questions and then we tear ourselves into tiny pieces trying to work out the answer to an unanswerable question you and I do not know why the government have decided what they've decided about anything on any day of the week, but you will hear people and see people on social media having a right good rant about it at their keyboard. Why are they doing this way? And don't, trust me, I've asked those questions myself. <laughs> but I kind of know when I start to feel uncomfortable that I'm going in a direction I don't want to go in. Those feelings you're feeling are telling you that you've got some thinking that's not helpful. Probably some overthinking about something. And the use of feelings as a kind of guide, a human dashboard, Excuse me. is so, so important because often we misread that dashboard we think those feelings are telling us something about the outside world but when you realize that your feelings are telling you something about you and what's going on in your head that changes completely the point of those feelings it changes your relationship with them because in an instant you can realise, oh, I don't feel nice, I've got some rubbishy thinking. I feel my heart is pounding and my stomach is churning and my shoulders feel uneasy. I've got some thinking that's creating those feelings. And just by shining a light on that, it is like, you know, shining a light on anything that responds badly to just shining a light into the dark I suppose shining a light onto a gremlin is another analogy that I use as soon as you have that awareness the feeling is coming from my thinking it just allows you to it allows that thinking to just melt away because all of a sudden there's nothing to do isn't it great when there's nothing to do and nothing to think about? And in any moment there is just a raising of your awareness, a realisation that that thinking is creating that unpleasant feeling. And it's the same with pleasant feelings. If you have a happy feeling, it's coming from happy thinking. But I think sometimes we get caught up in overthinking when we think we've got to do something about that. We've got to 
create something or change something in the outside world for us to be okay or that we've got to poke and prod that feeling until it goes away excuse me pretty interesting night's sleep last night so I'm going to leave that there because I don't want to give you too much to think about <laughs> ironically <laughs> I do appreciate your comments and thoughts on this. What what do you get caught up in in terms of overthinking? If you share that with me, perhaps I can point you in a different direction. Thank you so much for watching, now or later. Um, of course, it'll be now when you're watching, of course. <laughs> you're now, not the now I'm in right now. I've said now too many times now. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to have some lunch because I think I must need some food. Um, have a beautiful day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, let me know what you think about this video. And as I always say, take care. Thank you.